religion at war for thousands of years. Each time it's come to a test, it's turned out that science was right. As science has gotten better and better, God has had less and less to do. And yet today it may be the merging of faith and technology that brings us closer than ever to solving life's greatest mystery. Because I'm a religious believer, my science is one way of seeking out the mystery of God. Proving God. <laughs> Broadcasting live from the dark and cold dungeons deep beneath the KLAV studios in Las Vegas, Nevada. Prepare yourselves to be taken away into another dimension as we now have control over your thoughts, fears, and perspective of the unexplained world you dare not speak of. With your hosts, Lindsay Knight and Michael Knight. Ladies and gentlemen, we now open the gates to the paranormal and beyond. 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 Broadcasting live from the KLAV studios in Las Vegas, Nevada, this is the paranormal and beyond. When it comes to the definition of religion itself, the belief and worship in a godlike controlling power can be defined in so many ways that it is by far one of the most do not talk about subjects of all time. Although humanity has searched for a definitive answer, the definitions of religions tend to suffer from one of two problems. They are either too narrow and exclude many belief systems, or they are too vague and ambiguous, suggesting that everything and anything is religion, thus leaving us with more questions than answers itself. While some argue that religion doesn't really exist, religion has been at war with itself since its first conception. In a moment, Andrew Perrone, Susan Bell, Kelly Coffey, and Lori Fazzino will be joining us for a no-holds-barred roundtable debate on the subject of religion, unmasking the mysterious veil on the entire world's religious belief system. So ask yourself, is there a God? We will find out when we turn right here on the Talk of Las Vegas, KLAV 1230 AM. Your ticket to the unknown is at nightsparanormalresearchsociety.com. UFOs, ghosts, aliens, hauntings, mysterious places and more can be found at nightsparanormalresearchsociety.com. Nights with a K, paranormalresearchsociety.com. Based out of Las Vegas, Nevada, Knights Paranormal Research Society is owned and operated by the renowned brother and sister team of Michael and Lindsay Knight. Seeing is believing. And at Knights Paranormal Research Society.com, you're going to believe. Night, your host of the Paranormal and Beyond. Join us as we attend the True Paranormal Supernatural Summit in the Haunted Entertainment Awards at the Glen Tavern Inn in Santa Paula, California. This is your chance to rub shoulders with the best of the best in the paranormal community. There will be door prizes, celebrity guest speakers, paranormal investigations, and not to mention the coveted Haunted Entertainment Awards ceremony. So come on down the True Paranormal Supernatural Summit in the Haunted Entertainment Awards at the Glen Tavern Inn in Santa Paula, California and meet the entire cast of the Paranormal and Beyond. For more information and tickets, please visit SupernaturalSummit.Eventbrite.com Again, that's SupernaturalSummit.Eventbrite.com Hosted by Haunted Entertainment. 
Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 p.m. to midnight, for the paranormal and beyond. Join host Michael Knight and Lindsay Knight as they investigate the unexplained and most controversial mysteries of the world. The paranormal and beyond, where the paranormal lives on and conspiracies exposed. The paranormal and beyond, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 p.m. to midnight. Brought to you by Knight's Paranormal Research Society. Just because you've seen it in the news doesn't mean it's real. So you're telling me you got physically attacked by a ghost. Like I can tell you right now, I believe in the paranormal more than I believe in our government. There are so many mysteries out there that are still yet to be explained. Uh, you know, you folks uh, have some of your facts wrong, and you just keep talking about generality. With all due respect, sir, you have not brought anything to the table to prove us wrong. This is the Paranormal Land Beyond, and it's your show. Call us at 731-1230. Here again, Michael Knight and Lindsay Knight. Welcome back to another brand new and holy edition of the Paranormal Beyond. But first, be sure to check us out at Knight's Paranormal Research Society.com where you can link up to all the past shows by simply clicking on that archive link above. That's Knight's Paranormal Research society.com ever want to be an actor well here's your chance log on to hollywoodboundactingacademy.com once again that's hollywoodboundactingacademy.com special shout out to all those listening worldwide through the klav 1230 am.com website and all those driving around in the vegas valley listening us through your stereos i'm your host michael knight joined alongside of me is your hostess Lindsay Knight and David Gleason of the EOG Sports Hour, which can be heard right here at this station Monday through Friday from 10 to 11. How and if you have any access to time travel, you could go back in time and listen to tonight's show. I or you can just wait to put it up on the archives. That only exists within our minds. Okay. <laughs> that, that's just trying to do a little tie in. That's what we call it. You're trying to. How are you doing, Lindsay? Synergy. Good, good, good. Can't wait to start this show. All right, first and foremost, I just got to say, we are doing a show about religion. I know how touchy everybody is out there when we do a show. So by all means, we are not making fun of your religion, and we are not trying to convert you. We are simply stating what religion means to us and what the facts state that are literally carved in stone. So we are not imposing anything nor demoralizing your religion. Religion beliefs. So, uh, Lindsay, let's let's get into the, the topic because our first guest, Andrea Perone, is no stranger to the paranormal community. Born in Rhode Island in 1958, she is a graduate of Chatham College with an interdisciplinary degree in philosophy and in English literature. Andrea is the author of House of Darkness, House of Light, a three book series on which is the inspiration to the third largest grossing horror film of all time entitled The Conjuring, where the film depicts the true story of Andrea's family who were being terrorized by a dark presence in their secluded farmhouse in Harrisville, Rhode Island. This memoir waited 30 years to be told, allowing the time and distance necessary for her family to reveal these long held secrets. Currently, Andrea is preparing for the release of her third volume in the Remarkable Trilogy. Our second guest joining us in the studio, Lori Fazzino, is currently a doctoral student in the Department of Sociology at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, where she received her B.A. in Sociology with a minor in Philosophy from Picture Pacific Lutheran University in Tacoma, Washington, and an M.A. in Sociology at UNLV. Lori's research and interest spans across several subfields of sociology, including culture, religion, social movements, and mental health. Her master's work is on evangelism. Evangel <laughs> can we say that word? Evangel Evangelical. I can't say it. <laughs> Apostasy and deconversion trajectories, focusing primarily on the experiences of post-boomer self-identified atheists. Lori is currently working on examining the relationship between atheism and divine, specifically exploring the atheist response to divine labeling through social activism. Aside from produ producing research for the academic world, academic world, Lori also sits on the S Secular Student Alliance's National Speakers Bureau, where she is also the president of the Alpha Kappa Delta chapter at the University of Las Vegas. Lori is a teacher of the sociology of religion, as well as the sociology of deviance at UNLV, and also the introduction to sociology at the Univers University State College. That's a lot of terminology. <laughs> that's a, no, that's a... 
That's a smart woman. Welcome, Lori. Thank you. All right, it's let's get be on here. because we still have more people because our third guest joining into the program is Kelly Coffee, who is the owner of the Kelly and the Raw Show, which can be seen on her YouTube channel, which now has over 7 million viewers on which she teaches everyone how to develop their natural psychic abilities. After suffering from a near-death experience in 2010 that dramatically changed the course and outlook of her life, Kelly herself chose to come back and is now living out her mission. How are you doing, Kelly? I'm doing awesome. I'm so happy to be on your show. All right. Last but not least, Susan Bell has a degree in journalism from the University of Georgia and is the president plus executive director of the Foundation Beyond Expo and Beyond Talent Management Agency. Susan has also co-hosted and is the executive producer of the Las Vegas Night Shift. Susan, how are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm great. Your daughter says hi. She's in the station as well. <laughs> I know. All right. First, before we I get love- in. Excuse me? Hello? <laughs> no, I was just going to say, I love you, Jody. Oh, she loves you. She says she loves you. Well, this is going to be a very controversial show because everybody has their depiction and their belief system in what religion really is. And what the definition of religion is, is kind of hard to grasp because there's so many... Different well, types of terminology. Well, here's the thing. There's just so many beliefs in re- religion alone that a lot of people, you know, whether they buy into the Bible or they buy into the alien theory or they buy into any deity out there that has their own belief, it's kind of hard to pinpoint if there is actually a God out there. But I look at things different. We did so many shows that it's just so informative where religion does play a sense of a role in it where it's different, you know. So we're going to get into it. I don't want nobody to hold back. Trust me. You know, I'm the one who's going to get the hate mail, not you guys. So I want you guys to go for it. And first of all, start off with your religious belief system so everybody out there can get a handle and don't think that we all over here are like trying to burn people at the stake. So, Lori, start off first. You teach this at UNLV. I do. And my first, you know, perception of this, of you teaching something, was more like before I got to know you that, you know, oh, Jesus, this, you know, and and basically trying to conform people into one religion. But that's not the case. No, I don't teach religion. I teach the sociology of religion. And basically what that means is we're looking at the myths, we're looking at the symbols, we're looking at the rituals, which if you want to get down to the basic bottom of what is religion, we're talking about religion as a social construction. And we're talking about religion um, and how it, how it affects people uh, in their lives, how people use it, how people transform it, um, how, be, how, it, how it affects people's behavior and things like that. I don't teach religion. I'm not a Bible thumper. I'm actually an atheist. I'm an atheist, and that does not mean I'm a Satanist, because guess what? Atheists don't believe in Satan. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. So, you know, you can just get that picture out of your head. I mean, I'm an atheist, and they, and they let me teach this at, at the University of uh, Nevada, Las Vegas. Um, but mostly we're just looking at um, how p- people's religious beliefs, how the symbols and the myths and the rituals that underscore those beliefs, how that affect people's behavior. You know, there's so many different religions in our world, obviously, and I don't think one supersedes the other. I think that, you know, in every different society where they come from in every different culture, they have, you know, their own way of looking at who their deity or God is. Absolutely. You know, like in, you know, the United States, we have so many different people from different cultures that come here, you know, and they go to, you know, different places to worship. In the United States, the number one religion here is called the government. That's it. Okay. (laughs) Well, that's not too different than Christianity. I mean, if you want to talk civil religion and you want to talk about one nation under God, whose God are we talking about? Which God are we praying praying to? You mean the the, 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 the God that's on the dollar bill? The God that's on the dollar bill. Is that the Christian God? Is that Mm -hmm. the Catholic God? Is that the Hindu gods? Is that the Buddhist gods? Is, Is that Allah? Who is that? Well, here's the thing. Your students, when they walk into your class, okay, I know a lot of them do have religious beliefs. Absolutely. You know? I bet the Mormons are really fun for you to get a hold of. <laughs> you know what? I actually don't pick on them too much. Really? I do talk about the fact that I have a pair of magic underpants. Uh-huh. Well, me, well don't we all? Let me yeah. ask you a question, yes. Lori. As far as, you know, and there's nothing wrong. You know, Mormons are really good people. You they know, they are. They, they really are. Full disclosure, really I grew up nice. in Utah. So Why don't you let them in to get to I know them? I really, I don't know too much about, you know, as far as like what Mormons, you know, what they have to do. Uh, but what is this about paying a percentage? 
A tithing, yeah. That's very common in a lot of religions. I don't understand that. Yeah, that's actually in so many religions, Mm -hmm. tithing. It's, you know, it's it's giving this tithe, the 10%. So you see that in Mormonism, but you also see that heavily in Catholicism, well, yeah. Christianity. You pass I mean, around, the, the, I didn't know God was broke. Well, well, well we he ca- ain't broke. You know he's what? got a good, uh, good skim going. <laughs> we call say. this the spiritual marketplace. <laughs> mm-hmm, exactly. Right? So secularization was supposed to happen as religious pluralism uh, happened in the 1960s. Uh, you know, we thought there's so many religions uh, that they're just all going to go away, right? They can't all be right. right. And what ended up happening is this boom of the spiritual marketplace, whereas now we're selling spiritual products Mm -hmm. and churches and religious leaders have now become spiritual competitors right and so if you've got the biggest and the brightest and the shiniest kind of spiritual product right you're the winner you're the winner so think about the evangelical mega churches and they're stealing secular culture i mean they're playing eminem songs they're playing secular songs what about new age religion see new age religion that just kind of falls that kind of falls by the wayside Right. They're they're not really competing. They're in there. And so people who are disenchanted with uh, organized religion, with the big box religions, with the, you know, the Catholicism, the the Judaism, the Christianity, uh, they can go into the new age and it's there. Right. But they don't really market their products so much. I got to Susan, what is your belief? Well, actually, I was um, I was raised in the South and so Southern Baptist, Southern Methodist. My entire family is either Baptist or Methodist. Um, when I went to college, I, uh, going up, I was terrified, absolutely terrified. I thought God was this monster that was going to burn me at the stake type thing. And so I had to be good, and if I didn't, and then when I went to college, my um, one of my friends is Cuban, and every... Uh, Sunday morning at 8 o'clock, no matter what we did on Saturday night, we went to Mass. So I went home and told my family that I was converting to Catholicism. They almost died. They thought I was going to hell because I was going to become Catholic. Then I took my mom with me to, um, to talk to the priest who was actually giving me my catechism uh, instructions, and she was impressed, very impressed. And she said, okay, you have my blessing. So I did that, but the more you study and the more you study ancient civilization, the more you're exposed to different things. I lived in Iran, so I've been exposed to the Muslim faith. Um, I have really come to kind of uh, explore, explore things, and I, you know, I read the Bible in a totally different way. As we were talking, Michael, about chariots in the sky on fire, um, Why would I think that couldn't be an alien spaceship or a UFO or whatever we want to call it? Why do we think that we're the only people in the universe? So I think my thoughts now, even though I love going to the Catholic Church, I'm not going to lie, I get a very, very... You're just there for the wine. Don't lie. (laughs) Exactly. No, actually, it's very peaceful for me. And I meditate there. So if that, um, you know, I mean, that's kind of what it is for me. But I also know I I embrace the Native American with the spirit. And Jody and I have talked about this a lot and how the Native Americans, I think what we did in monotheism is we just combined everything, the moon god, the sun god, the, you know, god of the sea and all of these things. We just kind of took it and grouped it into one. And if we are going to think about a creator, maybe that was the, the right thing to do. I kind of tend to think of God as, as light, as energy. That's how I think of it. Well, that's m- my belief also. Um, so that's like, uh, as opposed to the religious marketplace, that's more the religious Las Vegas buffet. <laughs> right. Exactly. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll be here all week. <laughs> Kelly, now, um, this Wait. question is for you. You've had a near-death experience yourself. Yes. So here, here's the thing, because I'm a near-deather. Hello. So Hello. the belief, mm-hmm. the belief to everybody out there who has crossed over is that they did see God, and that's what everybody thinks that you go to heaven and. You, you hear a lot about the the life flashing, but a lot of people has a you know that idea that we all connect with God. But I didn't have that. What was your experience like, and your belief and outlook on when it comes to religion itself? 
Well, I, I guess I'll start with uh, the question on the belief system. I don't subscribe to any organized religions, and I don't follow any belief systems. If you look up the word belief, belief is a psychological state in which an individual holds a conjecture or a premise to be true. Uh, basically, in the middle of the word belief, you have the word lie. So you don't quite know if this is true or not. You just hold it uh, to be true. I follow more of a system of knowledge. And since I did die, I have firsthand knowledge of what it is like. Uh, so when I came back to this planet, uh, chose to come back to this planet, uh, you see how there's so many holes in, in these religions. And um, you're calling something God. Uh, I grew up Baptist. And I was taken to church every time the doors uh, were open. And this thing called God was just, uh, you know, shoved down my throat. And it put a bad taste in my mouth. <laughs> so uh, when, it, when I died, I was in the presence of something that was, that really cannot be defined. It is the creator uh, of this universe. And it is pure love and pure energy, but nothing along the lines of what they talked about uh, in church. But instead of calling it God, because it's completely different than what they call God in church, I call it the light uh, or source. I think that's a better definition for me. Do we have Andrea on the phone? We don't. Okay. Okay. She's walking within the light as we speak. <laughs> no, he, he, here's the thing. Okay, let's get into religion itself, all right? You talk to these people who are so religious. I was brought up Greek Orthodox Catholic, but now, you know, doing my own research and really seeing past the Bible. Okay, you have people out there who are pushing the Bible and, and trying to convert you. And then if you don't convert, you're going to go to hell. These are the same people who also tell you that you know, only God can judge you, but yet they're judging you every day because of because you don't want to convert, you know, and then they, they throw. See, this is what I don't get. We have a religion who sits there and tells you that, you know, thou shall not kill. I'm not condoning murder. All I'm just proving a point here that thou shall not kill. And you have to follow these commandments. But yet you have Christianity who goes through all these wars since the beginning of time and killed so many people. Burning, And then you have burning at the stake. Yes, because you're a heretic because you have an own op your own opinion or because you believe in yourself. I think believing in yourself is better than believing in something that is not proven. Well, see, here's, I think, you know, when you go to, let's just say, any kind of church, you know, whatever your religion is, and, you know, you, you go to worship and you go as a unity, you know, to this temple and everybody is united for love and peace, you know, and everybody socializes, that's great. That's awesome. But I think your body is your own temple and what you believe inside, you know, should also be, you know, the right thing. But then uh, there's a lot of people who can, you know, who, who condemn you because you automatically think, well, well, I don't believe in God or I think this way or I'm just spiritual. And well, they look at you now, like, my goodness. Now look at Christianity, Hinduism and all this, okay? Every book that's, whether it's in the Quran or everything, has a similar story, okay? When it comes to the story of Genesis, you know, something happened there where, you know, man was created. And, and you know, we did a show about Mars and, you know, the missing link. Although people tend to point it as God, as you have a lot of people that say God is a man. Really? I think God is energy, <laughs> you know? But I don't believe in one God. I believe in God. So we look at ourselves as human, all right? Look at the stuff we can do. Aren't we godlike? I'm God. Right? I am. God is in me. And if there is a God, it's in me. And uh, if you say that in front of a lot of people, you will get I, chastised. I had you pegged as godlike when you walked in. Right? Yeah. It's the you shirt. Got, yeah, I think it's the shirt. I got, I a, vibe. I got a godlike vibe. <laughs> no, but yeah. here's the I mean, thing. Here's the thing. Real, real quick. You know, I'm, I'm just going to point this out. You know, everybody, we're human, okay? We want to have faith in something to move forward to and to, you know, to have something in front of us that we can say, hey, you know what, I want to reach that goal, whatever it may be, and you know, I need some help, whether your neighbor's not going to help you or the person next to you, but you want to have something even spiritually to help you. So you have faith. Now, I would say put the faith in yourself and see how far you can reach that and how far you can go. Yes. Well, you have a lot of people out there saying, God will help me through this, and they end up just saying, sitting in bed all day waiting for God to do something. I think you got to take the initiative and do something yourself to make things happen. 
You know, this this is God's not going to give you a million dollars. He's not. You have to walk halfway there to accomplish anything in your life. But religion has skewed so far. Give you know, you think God is carrying a heavy cross now? He's probably carrying like a Buick on his back now because everybody <laughs> is asking him for stuff. This is what gets me about religion. I'm not putting it down, but we look at the Bible. I had numerous arguments with people that because they can't see past the Bible. Everything started with the Bible and ended with the Bible. Wake up call, everybody. The Bible was written 300 years after the crucifixion of Christ. Nobody was sitting there with a journal and be like, okay, they're, they're hammering the first nail in right now. You know, nobody is doing that. And even the stories, the forced gospels in the Bible, was it written by the people that Matthew didn't write that? But this is the conception, and they're raising their kids on this, all right? And it was written like 70 years after the fact. Exactly. But when we are talking about hardcore fact, that's chiseled in the stones of Egypt, on the wall, in the hieroglyphs, that supersedes the Bible itself. They don't look at that. That is not a remarkable find. But yet, the best-selling book in the world is the Holy Bible. How about this stuff talking about helicopters way back in the heydays? You know, isn't that remarkable? Isn't the pyramids remarkable? Isn't that stuff like, you know what? Maybe we are missing a lot of time here. And by searching that and, and people telling you, you know, everybody who's religious, you need to find God. Well, see, God is there if you look. And I think, you know, what Kelly said about and what Susan said about knowledge, you know, it changes just perspective and how you see things because you know it, it's like the matrix you, your mind and your eyes are open to so many other different things and you see past what you were told as a child and what you grow up into because now you're taking it upon the initiative of yourself to look past that and say hey you know what maybe there is something else out there and not being afraid to go and do that for yourself but there's so many other people that are conformed to that ideology that you know what this is what I need to believe in because I'm going to be looked frowned and I'm, I'm going to look frowned upon Lori, yeah. have you ever got in it with your students at UNLV? You know. That's like, you're just crazy. I don't know why I got this course. Last <laughs> semester, last semester, I had a student pretty much tell me he was better than me because he had God. <laughs> Where was he? In his pocket? You know, I mean, I found God in my dryer when the, when the Jehovah's Witness, no, the Mormons came. Like, mm -hmm. the God was in my dryer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to hell. <laughs> But, you know, I, I do want to say, like, I think it's important to make the distinction that, you know, you talk about religion and you talk about God and oftentimes people conflate those two things like they're the same, but they're really not. Right. When we talk about religion, we're talking about religion like we're talking about government, like we're talking about yeah. education, like we're talking about the family. Religion is a social institution. It is something that we have created. It is something that we forget that we create. Right. So we take it to be as natural. It's got this ontological status like like, oh, it's religion. <laughs> And, like, it gets to tell you, you know, how you should live your life. Now, whether or not God exists, I don't know. That's all, you know, I don't know. I, there's no empirical, verifiable fact. You know, I can't do an experiment and, and replicate it, and, yes, God exists. And I will say about those hieroglyphics that you're talking about, just like the Bible's interpretable, so are those. Yeah. Right? And you're interpreting it a certain way, but that does not make it fact. Right? That makes it your interpretation and what has more weight. And, and that's, you know, one thing. But when we talk about God, like... We can't prove that. Like, we don't know. I don't know. Right? So when we're talking about religion, we're talking about just an institution. But, but religion, right? Not God. Religion is what people are killing people over. Religion is what is driving people to say, hey, you're going to burn in hell. Guess what? No, I'm not because I don't believe in it. Oh, right. Is, isn't that the thing? It's like, you know what? If you don't believe in God, you're going to hell. You're going to burn for eternity. But in the end, God will still love you. Really? But see, here's the, here's the, <laughs> I don't get it. Here's the thing, too. They, they say, you know, it's, it, you know, a lot of people say, and I do, and I will repeat this again. A lot of people do say, not everybody, but a big percentage of our population in the world does say that, you know what, you have to, con not Ten Commandments, but you mm -hmm. do have to at least oblige by at least don't kill somebody. And I'm not saying, hey, go out there and murder your next, you know, next door neighbor. But, you know, if I, as an individual myself, go out there, help the community, do what I need to do, you know, be nice to the next person, you know, and that that moves on and it trickles down. And I'm doing what I need to do, you know, to, to help my and help other people and make the next person happy and you know and, and give and give and give am i gonna if am i and i say i don't believe in god am i gonna go to hell still that's no god i want to spend eternity with and that's what i say all the time i don't, I don't I, believe that i go out there and i love people because let me just tell you what underscores like most atheist morality it's a belief in humanity it's a belief in this is the only life we get this is a finite time we have on earth right and so i'm gonna make it better 
Because I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to get some um, unverifiable afterlife reward. I'm not trying to come back (laughs) and do this again. No, (laughs) I'm going to make it better just simply by the fact that I live here and I want it to be good. And you know what? I love people. I will give you the shirt off my back. I will go feed you. I will embrace you. And you know, if I do, if I'm wrong, right, and I get to heaven and that's not enough, if loving people is not enough... Well, fuck you, God. Oh, can I say that? Oh, oh, oh. Uh-oh. oh my God. Nobody told me. I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll take care of that in post-production. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Did you catch that? <laughs> That's something you will go to hell for. Now you're, gonna gonna get it. I'm now you're getting struck by <laughs> lightning just for <laughs> that. Lori's getting struck by lightning on the it. way home. Uh, in this show, okay. I am God. <laughs> yes, it's okay. <laughs> No, well, but you see how apologies. no, but you we'll see, take it out. Post no, but you okay. see that how passionate you got. I do. You yeah. forgot the rules. You know. You didn't tell me the rules. <laughs> okay, but uh, well, <laughs> oh god, that just like threw you're, the show off. Now right? you're going to hell. You, you know, <laughs> it's like talking of a god is nothing when you drop an f bomb. It's like, oh my god, what do we do next? Ryan, did you get that? <laughs> He's giving me so the thumbs up. Kelly, um, and Susan. Oh. Any one of you who wants to chime in, what what is your take on what we're st- what we're talking about right now? <laughs> Well, I think uh, what, what Lori is saying, Andrea Parent sent me a message on Facebook, and she's wondering why no one has called her yet. So <laughs> the she- show is going on. <laughs> it's going on. <laughs> we've, uh, we've tried. We can try calling Andrea again, but we've tried. Um, our engineer has actually tried calling her um, numerous times. And I can vouch for his competency. He's a pretty, pretty sharp guy. I didn't get a call either. That's what I was going to tell you guys. I didn't get one. Well, so because the powers that be is yeah. preventing this show. <laughs> Good with our phone it's lines. God. I know. It's crazy. <laughs> no, what I was going to say, um, is, you know, with the, one of the things that Lori um, brought out that, you know, she didn't want to be a part of that angry kind of God. That was the basic thing that I grew up with. And when I said I was scared, I was terrified as a child. So... I would rather be on the on the ship with the the God that is loving and caring and kind and the, just like Lori said. And because I am Catholic, I, I have the utmost integrity and and respect for uh, our new Pope. And he has made a statement, and, and I'm not looking at it, so this is kind of just my interpretation of it, is if you're a good person, doesn't matter if you're atheist or whatever, Pope, Paul, uh, Pope Francis said, I will see you again. And so this is incredible to me for a Catholic priest and a pope to come out and say something different than what you're taught uh, uh, in the Christian society. If you don't believe in Jesus Christ, you won't go to heaven. You'll go to hell. Isn't that amazing? And I think that's why he's man of the year on Time Magazine. (laughs) You know, exactly because he's different. He's showing you this is see, this is what we need. We need somebody who's open minded and not buying everything that even within their own, you know, social, you know, program that they're coming out and say, you know what? I believe what you're saying, but yet, let's look at this. He needs to go on record record, and just say that, you know, should I end up dead? Can it we trust was not a suit of suicide. <laughs> Can we trust this Okay, girl? we have uh, Andrea, you're on the line. Hi, I am. Andrea, yeah. I, okay, Andrea, I got it. Oh, yeah. For anybody, Andrea, you're the oldest of the five sisters, correct? I am. And now, um, for people who don't know who Andrea, even though I, I, you know, I gave your bio, Andrea, everybody knows the movie The Conjuring. Well, she and her family went through a really, you know, dark, a dark, dark, terrifying time that, you know, that now here's the question because of what you went through and everybody's like, okay, demonic, all this stuff tortured. Was there a divine intervention? When I say divine, people are thinking angels, God, Jesus and all that. What is your take on that? What happened with you? Um, well, it wasn't all dark. It wasn't all doom and gloom. I would say that all of our family was profoundly touched by spirit. But when we were in crisis, there was intervention. And all that it required was for us to directly to what our concept of God is. Um, and I know everybody has an individualized, singularized concept of what God is. 
But when we spoke from our heart, from our gut, from our soul, and said, please come rescue us, come help us, God help me, that's when it would stop. And that was the only thing that would stop it, which told me from a very early age that whatever we were reaching out to, whatever that concept is in our minds, is also out there and is self-identifying. Um, it is what intervened on our behalf and yes i have no qualms about calling it divine intervention okay were you very religious growing up as far as well you- we were we were all born and raised catholic we were all baptized contrary to what the film portrays um the film portrays us as godless heathens and the warrants as the devout catholics and i know that they did that for you know to draw a line of demarcation I get why they did that, because they wanted to juxtapose the family against the Warrens. But the fact is that we were all practicing Catholics, and we did not turn our back on the Catholic Church. It turned our back on us, because our local parish priest was terrified by what he heard was happening at our house. Okay, um, what is your definition, if I asked your definition of God itself? I consider God to be the space between the molecules that holds them together. I consider that the quark theorem is certainly conceivable. I think that it is divine um, consciousness. It's uh, infinite intelligence. I don't consider it a he or a she. I don't think that it is sexualized in that manner. I think that it is power beyond our comprehension, and yet I think that we are all divine manifestations of it. This is how God sees the world through our eyes, our world, just this world, and that there are multitudes of other ways that God sees the universe through all its other creations and its manifestations. And I think it's highly plausible that what we worship as the human race, as a variety of God, um, is most likely uh, an extraterrestrial life form. See, I like I like how you think. You're speaking my language. Yeah, my my too. <laughs> All right, because if we look at ourselves, we are the only species on this planet who has a belief system. You know, you don't have cats following one cat. Or right. my dog's Buddhist, by the way. <laughs> In most cases, of you're course right. he is. Yeah. Has to be your dog. Yeah, yeah, but. So you have to tend to look, and, and, and you know, Lori, who just had the devil jump out of her a few moments ago, who is still Very kicking her. Very passionate about atheist morality. Yeah, who is still kicking herself for that. Shame on you. But we have to, you know, if we want to find the answer, and it's going to be hard because we're not. Each and everybody has a belief, and that's what it is. It's a mm-hmm. belief that still we can't put a finger on, but a lot of people will die for their beliefs, and that's the scary part, that people will literally die. You know, if they hear God on the voice saying, you all need to jump off the Grand Canyon, you'll have a line, you know? I'll be there charging tickets like you guys are crazy. And maybe people are just crazy. Maybe they're schizophrenic. Maybe they're delusional. Maybe they're, you know, and I'm not saying that people are, but I'm just saying, Paul hearing the voice on the way to Damascus, like maybe that's just undiagnosed mental illness, you know? And, and it, it, it's just a, it's just another explanation. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. Well, that's how everything goes. Everything's an explanation. But when it comes down to it, you know, after all we said and done, it does not answer that question, what is religion? And I think it really needs to be answered because if there was... I'm not saying there isn't because obviously there is. Everybody out there is selling something to religion. Everybody is chastising you because you don't believe in this. You know, you can't get married if you're both not Catholics in the Catholic Church. There, it's a bunch of rules. It's a bunch of rules. Everything is rules. Somebody told me, oh, what gives humanity freedom? And, somebody, and they, said, they said, oh, it's the Constitution. Well, isn't that a rule? You know, it was, it's weird because, you know, I ended up going to this church um, and, you know, was, I'm, was Catholic. Um, born and raised Catholic, and I was going to church, um, and I read a pamphlet saying that if you want to get married, you actually have to go to school for six months, you and your partner, um, uh, and, and I couldn't understand why you have to go to school for six months, I guess, to get the rules down. I don't understand that concept. I really don't. I, I'm thinking if you want to get married and you want to have you know unity of two people, it's like, it, can't you just go to church and they marry you, especially if you're going to this 
place well, of worship. How's that different than therapy? Yeah, I went to the little what? church Marriage the and got married. That worked out, it's worked all, out for 10 years. Better than most people It's do. really a matter of indoctrination. Mm-hmm. It really is. And, you know, my definition of religion is the scourge of the earth. All religion is the scourge yes. of the earth. I think you that, know something? You know, I look back on the Crusades, just the Crusades killed more people, made the Holocaust look like, you know, a blip on the radar. And it, more people have died in the name of Jesus Christ than by all diseases combined on this planet. And here's, here's the issue here. Uh, however he walked the earth, however he got here, and I have my own theories about that, um, I think that uh, we've completely misconstrued the message. You know, the Prince of Peace comes to the earth and says, love thy as thyself, and then we go around the planet as a bunch of barbarians to spread his holy word and, you know, take off the heads of anybody that says, but that's not my belief system. It's absurd. I mean, we are, I, I, I don't understand how humans even dare to call ourselves civilized, even use that word, because it, it just seems to me, I think that the very best definition for it comes from Susan B. Anthony. And she wrote, I trust those people who know so well what God wants them to do, because I, I notice it always coincides with their own desires. Well, yeah. And she wrote that over 100 years ago. Susan B. Anthony and, was you know, She had her finger right on it. It always coincides with their own desires. Religion, as we know it on this planet now, is established for one reason and one reason only, in my opinion, and that is to control the masses and to circumvent their money into a church. Churches are money-making ventures. That's what they are. And sadly, it, in, in terms of, I was born and raised Catholic, but I don't uh, cut any slack to the Catholic Church in my books because my mother was turned away uh, from help by the Catholic Church. Now, that's the very foundation of demonology. That's the very root of the belief in the devil and there being anything that's evil in the world that can be stopped. And the Catholic Church says that they've got the corner, the market of stopping it, which that's not true. That's just simply not true. So the fact of the matter is, that, you know, through the subjugation of women, through the exploitation of children, and on and on and on. The, the Roman Catholic Church has established its own hierarchy that does not include the acceptance of many people in, in the world, including the worldwide homosexual population, including any woman that has ever desired to end a pregnancy for whatever reason, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, the, the thing is, and it's much like, you know, the Church of Christ. It has a half a million members worldwide, but all they talk about is if you're not a member of the Church of Christ, you will burn in hell. Well, uh, so there's seven billion people on the planet. A half a million of them are going to heaven, and all the rest of us are going to fry. It, you know, it's, it's ludicrous. It's absolutely ludicrous. And the fact of the matter is that all these people that are believing in something that's invisible are, you know, the ones that will say, oh, for instance, um, the Jehovah's Witnesses. There is, there's a, in a pamphlet that my sister was given by one of her co-workers, who's a Jehovah's Witness, the number four reason, that, uh, the number four uh, prerequisite for being a Jehovah, uh, Jehovah's Witness is that you do not believe in spirits. <laughs> uh, really? Okay. Um, well, what if you've seen one? What if you've encountered one? What if you had a, a, a up close, impersonal, in-your-face encounter with a full-body apparition? That means that you are now excluded. You either have to deny what you saw or could never be a Jehovah's Witness. You know, it's it's absolutely absurd. Um, we have structured a society that's built around, you know, one religion after another that, you know, generally share a lot of the tenets 
but we don't live by them. I had an encounter today. I went into the wrong line at Walmart, and this woman just unleashed on me. I didn't look up, and I didn't see the sign. I was tired, and she unleashed on me, and I turned around, and I looked at her, and I said, ma'am, I didn't see the sign. Are you a Christian? She said, I certainly am. I said, Perhaps you should consider acting like one instead of treating me <laughs> like I've done something to personally assault you because I had two items more in my cart than belonged in this line. And she got all red-faced and turned and walked away. <laughs> you know, and I was like, oh, my, oh my God, you know, tis the season. You know, uh, I, I don't know. There, there's no explaining it. To me, I just... When I have moments like that, I have to sit back and say, I just don't even belong here. Why am I even here on this planet with these people? I think most religions no. deal with people who abuse expressly and harshly, though. Well, look, Christmas is coming up. The birth yeah. of Christ is not even the right date. But everybody, I think everybody's just in it for the presents and gifts. You know, everything is becoming a commodity now when it comes to religion. I'm just in it for the wild parties they throw here at KLAV. <laughs> How do you get an invite to that? Don't bring that up, buddy. How do you get an invite to that? Oh, believe me, you're, <laughs> you're better off not getting one. <laughs> well, uh, just don't get in front of somebody that counts what's in your basket. Exactly, That's twenty items or less. They really mean it there at Walmart. I can tell you. But here, my take. I need Andrea, this cat litter. Andrea, oh. yes, yes, darling. You're in the South, honey. <laughs> We both know Georgians. You're in the South. I'm sorry. I love Georgia. But oh, yeah. <laughs> it's just, oh you honey, know, you don't know how well aware I am. I'm in the Bible Belt. I mean, if they yes. knew I was here, they would burn me in effigy on my own front lawn. <laughs> <laughs> Forget about they, the Ku Klux Klan. You're done. Crispy. Yeah, they try to do that me for me every time I go home because I'm like the wayward child. But one of the things that Michael brought up and, and Andrea did too when she's talking about, you know, there are so many things really in the Bible if you actually read it and you're not reading it, you're reading it from, an, from a knowledge standpoint instead of reading it from, you know, the usual Christian type reading. But there's one thing that popped up in, on Facebook, actually, from one of my relatives in Georgia a couple of days ago, right before we, uh, we did our conference, guys. And I want to read this to you, and it, it's really short, but I want to read it to you because I want you to get the key words that I'm talking about. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of light. How can we not think that at this time there were UFOs and there were things coming in? The Father of Light. I mean, there's so many things, even in the Bible, that are indicating to us that there's life form and a superior form coming down from the sky. Well, a lot of religions out there don't believe in life but our own. You know, and that's the problem. And you have these people passing it off to their offsprings as kids growing up. And until they realize that, you know, within themselves, they have the power of knowledge and start seeking out, even if they don't find the truth, they will learn, they'll get closer to the truth than what's going on. I don't think that religion, no matter what deity out there, there's so many that has branched off into different ways of thinking. Although there are a lot of similarities, you have to sit back and think, if religion is out there, there should only be one. But what I think, it, it's just gone. It's gone. Says who? Says who that there but should... But there really is only one religion. I, I used a, a metaphor just the other day. There really is only one um, belief system on the planet. And it's, it's all about focusing... And even if that belief is coming from an atheist, as I think I mentioned to you the other night about, you know, just looking up into the sky and going, wow, you know, this, wow. It, it's, that in itself is a belief system. Uh, even if you just feel like a little tiny speck of sand on an endless beach. Uh, but the fact is, I, I use a metaphor uh, about uh, belief systems, and it's like we're, you're holding a her and you're looking into it. 
And in that, you're seeing God. You're seeing the manifestation of God. You're seeing your own reflection. And uh, if you drop that mirror and it fractures into a thousand different pieces, you can still see your own reflection. You're just seeing it from a little bit different perspective. Can I uh, can um, I just ju- jump in and just say because I know we're wrapping up here. <laughs> Watch but, what you say. <laughs> re- I, I promise. Religion is interpretation. We need to get her back for a whole show. She's Reli- excellent. We re- haven't given her enough time. To religion talk. is interpretation. Yeah. If you really want to go down to it, like what Susan was saying, like how can you not, you know the God of the above, you know, the father of light. How can you not look up and think that's aliens? I hear that and I think it's a meteor or a supernova. It's science. So if you really <laughs> yeah. want, and that's just me, right? Do you We're, believe in alien life? You know, I'm, 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 the jury's out. I don't know. I don't have empirical proof, right? But I I'm believe not, in Bigfoot. But I'm not going to say no. Now. But if religion is interpretation. <laughs> if we want to get down to it, what's truth? There's little T truth. There's big T truth. We all have a little T truth. For me, religion's interpretation, period. All right, Kelly, uh, wrap it up real quick because we are condensed on time right now. Tell me your definition of religion the best way you can. Well, uh, religion is very simple. Uh, You can brush your teeth religiously. It's just doing something (laughs) over and over again. Uh, what I practice is more, I guess, on the, along the lines of spirituality, which I don't find in many churches. And since I uh, go down the path of spirituality, what a lot of people assume about me is that I'm following the New Age movement, uh, because they are very spiritual. But the New Age movement uh, is also a religion that is built on deception, uh, stating that now we have the feminine. Uh, if you don't have a balance of masculine and feminine, you have a disaster. We have an imbalance right now, but the answer is not to put a female in charge because you'll have a disaster uh, down the line. But uh, spirituality is is basically what we need to be going for. Religion is control. It's, it's used to control the mass, masses. Spirituality connects you with what created uh, this universe. And I heard, I'm not sure who said this while ago, uh, we are humans. We are not really humans. We are eternal spirits having a human experience. Can I say amen? (laughs) Or ramen. Ramen? (laughs) The flying spaghetti monster. Ramen. Okay, three minutes. So everybody got 30 seconds. Susan Bell, what's your take on religion in 30 seconds? Knowledge. Mm. Explore. Look at ancient civilization. Look at the writing on the walls. Read the Bible and actually concentrate instead of a preconceived idea of what you're going to see absolutely uh andrea and you uh well i think it's a fraud (laughs) religion is a fraud i do Um, amen but i am a deeply spiritual person and i am very connected with whatever it is that had something to do with my creation i certainly have a sense of it um but i think you know the gathering of uh the gathering of people in pews is um fraudulent at its core and you, Lori. Social construction, social control, interpretation. It's ritual, it's symbol, it's myth. Facebook me and ask me about my spiritual experience at a Lincoln Park concert. I can tell you all about it. Oh, I bet that was rad. Yeah, no doubt. No. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my take yeah. on it. My take on religion itself, that there is no religion higher than the truth. And that is point blank. You cannot mess with the truth. Whether it comes out to understand what religion will be, or what it was, you know, I, I think it's good. We're not ready for it. We're not ready for anything. We're just too uncivilized as a species. Speak for yourself, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're the most perfect, guys. All right. Our time is almost up. Uh, Andrea, when's your third book coming out? Oh, very soon. I'm working diligently on it. I just want it to be perfect, as Susan well knows. <laughs> um, yes, yes, I she, do. She tells me. Yes, it will be the best of the bunch. I have uh, put my heart and soul into it, uh, and I'm shooting to get it to the publisher uh, by the end of the month. All right, thanks, everybody, for coming on the show. Don't forget to also visit Kelly and Ron, on our YouTube channel. Lori, go visit her at UNLV. Uh, if you guys, if Just wander you, around. You'll find her eventually. Yeah, you'll find her. <laughs> not like there's any other students or faculty there. <laughs> and Susan, the Beyond Expo is coming up, so everybody go on Facebook, beyondexpo.com. Everybody out there, have a great weekend. Enjoy yourself. Have fun. And remember, there's no religion higher than the truth. Join us back here Monday as we talk about the JFK assassination and all the hoopla surrounded around that. 
by a former CIA agent who was there. All right, everybody, enjoy your thing, and uh, I guess Merry Christmas, if you believe in it. It's a little premature. Well, you might as well. Winter solstice. All right, everybody out there, this is Paranormal Beyond signing off. Take care and good night.